Hello, this is Frank with Frank's Beautiful Rocks and Minerals. I'm not here to talk about a scientific subject or rocks and minerals and geology. This is another video about religion. The title of this video is How to Get to Heaven. Heaven is a place where people who have done no sin, no evil, will go and be with the Lord and rejoice with the Lord in a beautiful, wonderful place forever and ever. There's a verse in the Bible that says that no eye has seen nor ear has heard the pleasures of heaven. But there's also another place for evil people. And Satan, which is a fallen angel who deceived a third of the angels to usurp God and become like God out of pride and covetousness. And he, that was his first sin, that was his inequity, will wind up as a result in hell, which is a place, as Jesus Christ in the Christian Bible said, is a place of gnashing of teeth and weeping day and night forever and ever. But there is a problem. We are all evil. We are all criminals. And the word for criminals in the Bible is sinner. Sinners. We are all sinners. I am a criminal. I have done criminal acts in my past and as a result got a felony record. I have two third degree felonies on my criminal record and cannot get expunged. My neighbors I could be I, I could be I could be trivial about it and say my neighbors started it. One of my neighbors my neighbor started it and did me wrong and did me really dirty. And I got revenge and vandalized their house when I was drunk. This is this is twenty one years ago. And I got caught by the police and that was my first third degree felony. I, could, I, I live in the state of New Jersey, and I could have gotten it expunged or erased from my record. But five years later, they're still bothering me, and I yelled over to them, but they're tape recording me. If you don't leave me alone, I'm thinking of vandalizing your house again. They took that to the police, and I was charged with another third-degree felony, and with two third-degree felonies on my record, I can't get expunged. For the last 20 years, even though I applied to 20 companies and I was applying in chemistry, I used to be a chemist, and now I apply in electronics because I own my own electronics company since 1995. Uh, I have been applying for a job in electronics, first chemistry and now electronics for the last 20 years. Companies do background checks and I have not been hired. I've done menial labor but it has never worked out due to the fact that I do not speak the language of my co-workers at some of the jobs that I have had, could not communicate, and therefore could not do my work. But it is all my fault. Because instead of being a Christian and saying, I forgive my neighbors and praying to God for them to come to an understanding of their wrong and praying for me to not harbor hatred in my heart, I instead got drunk, which is just 300 verses in the Bible against drinking, and which also is congruent to drugs. And I vandalized her house, and I yelled over what they call terroristic threats. And so now no company will hire me. I rely on my sole proprietorship business, Frank Reiser Video Audio Service. But I only earn $50 a month on average. I'll repair people's electronics for about $100, but I can't afford advertising fees, so even though I have a website and I have a site on Yelp, it just, I'm just, I just canceled my application on Yelp, so I don't have uh, contact information, people could still Google my company and I get work, but it only equates to about $50 a month. I live with my mother, she's 79 years old and most likely will soon die. She's also a smoker. And I'm 52. And I'm probably going to live another 40 years maximum on, on Earth until I die. 
where do we go after we die? Do we go to heaven or do we go to hell? Sinners go to hell, but we are all sinners and I am one of them. I was raised as a Protestant and I was brought down in the church and born again at the age of 14 with my grandfather. But I had no understanding. I had knowledge of a lot of the Bible, but no understanding of the Bible. Understanding means that you have a real comprehension of the, of the information and the consequences and prospects of the Bible, not just knowledge of facts and figures. And I didn't, therefore, have faith. I didn't feel a need for faith. I was in public school, going to college, and I was having a good time with my college friends. We would drink every night after I did my studies, and then I'd go out and do what would be called criminal mischief, drunk, just like my friends in college. We did a lot of ridiculous things. But technically, you could laugh, at, secular people could laugh about it and say, oh, that's funny, he did this, this, and this, he climbed through a uh, air conditioning shaft and stole candy and stuff like that. Uh, but that's really not funny, it's crime. And I committed it. For many years, the Lord let me get, get rid, let me get by without earthly law punishment with my crimes, with my sin. I didn't get caught. Until recently, starting about seven years ago, every time I did something wrong, I got caught. And it started 28 years ago, 21 years ago, when I vandalized my neighbor's house. And then when I yelled over ter terroristic threats five years later. Okay, so 20 years ago it started. Uh, the Lord, I'm 52, and 20 years ago, the Lord put his foot down with me, and it was very obvious to me, he no longer let me get away with sin. And it was evidence to me that there is a God, and that he does punish sin. The Bible says people think they can get away with sin because God doesn't punish it right away, immediately, but that's not true. That wasn't true, at least, in my life, and I think God made it not true in my life because he wanted me to be a witness for him. He wanted me to come to a realization that God and Jesus Christ and Christianity do exist, and he does it by miracles. And some of the miracles I see are the fact that he no longer lets me get away with sin, I look at my body as an incredible biochemical mechanical machine. I look at reality as being amazing, a miracle. It shouldn't exist. In college, I used LSD and DXM hallucinogens and realized when I was tripping that nothing should be in existence, not matter, not time, not space. Where do these things come from? They come from the Lord. But my message is this, and it's going to be a brief one. How do we get to heaven? Is it belief in Jesus Christ? And who is Jesus Christ? John 3.16 is familiar to many Christians and people. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, that whoever should believe should not perish, but have everlasting life. But it only says believe. You cannot read one verse in the Bible and use it for your own justifications of your acts and belief system. You have, you have to cross-reference all of the verses of the Bible and see how they support and, uh, and interpret each other. And this is important, and that's why we are given the entire book of the Bible written by scholars and the saints only 2,000 years ago. And that's not a long time ago. That's not many generations, 2,000 years. And then Gutenberg came out with the uh, printing press and started mass producing the Bible. And 
And so uh, you look at the King James Bible and for Bibles further back and they have less errors in them. The errors are still minimal. God is in, con is in control of what is written in the Bible. And he has, and the, and the Bible is written divinely. And th these things are true. And there is one main message in the Bible, Catholic, Protestant, it doesn't matter, that holds true. And that is this. God came down to earth as a human to save the human race pre-knowing that he was going to be executed, crucified by an evil, mad mob of people. Jesus came down to earth. Jesus Christ was God incarnate, God in human form. He was a man, flesh and blood. He felt uh, temptation, but he never sinned. He was tempted by Satan and never sinned in the desert. God had a great, Jesus had a great following of people. Well, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are the Trinity. They are one and three. Just like human beings are a spirit, a soul, and a human body. We are made in the image of God. We are also three in one. And that is one of the things that Lucifer, or after he became the enemy of man, changed his name to Satan, resents about mankind. That we are made in the image of God and he is not. He is an angel. When we go to heaven, we will not be angels. We will be made in the image of God in heaven. We will not be angels. But back to Jesus. Jesus had thousands of people following him and loving him. He distributed bread and loaves of fishes to 100,000 or 500,000 people. I forget the number in the Bible. An incredible amount of people from a miracle of just two fish and five loaves of bread. He, he mingled with the prostitutes and the murderers of the day and with the leopard, lepers, those with diseases. And the Pharisees, the religious scholars of the day, used to criticize him, saying, Who is this man that claims that he is king of the Jews, intermingling with those who are sick, ill, and criminals? But Jesus didn't come to save the scholars and the biblical superiors. He came to save the downtrodden and the sinners. A person like me, a person like you. For the Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But the grace of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, his Son. We must remember, yes, I have a felony record and I have not been hired for 20 years by a company and I'll only earn $50 a month to my own business because I can't afford to advertise. I earn $50 a month and I am brought electronics, mostly by word of mouth because people know that I'm professional, friendly, and most importantly, honest. And my honesty has given me a reputation that has spread among the community of the surrounding towns where people bring me electronics for repair. Electronics is very difficult to repair and often I can't get replacement parts. I wish I was a chemist again, it's easier. but. I haven't been a chemist for so long on my resume, that won't happen. Jesus Christ is the savior of mankind. He went to the cross after the evil mob said crucify and execute him, and he prayed on the cross, forgive them Father, for they know not what they do. Jesus prayed on the cross, forgive them Father, Father meaning God in heaven, for they know not what they do. And therefore, those that believe in Jesus will have eternal life. But that's not necessarily true. Remember, like I said, you have to read the whole Bible and compare scriptures. For even Satan and the demons believe in Jesus Christ and God, but they are going to hell. So what is the difference? How do we get to heaven if it's not just by belief? It is also by acceptance. We must accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. 
We must accept the fact that he died on the cross to save us of our sins so that when we die, God doesn't look at us in our perils and our evil doings on earth, but as though we were as clean as snow as Jesus Christ. But is that still enough? No, that is still not enough. You need to compare more verses in the Bible to have a clear understanding of how to get to heaven. There is one more thing, a third thing that we must have to get to heaven, and that is faith. When I sit down on the chair like I am now, I'm having faith that it's going to hold me up, that it's not going to break and cause me physical injury. When I broke my hip and I needed total hip replacement, I had faith that the anesthesia would not kill me and the doctor would fix my hip. And sure enough, my faith was true because hip replacements are so common today and I've been done for so many decades that I survived the surgery and uh, am fine today. When we fly in an airplane at 36,000 feet and 500 miles an hour, we are calm and at ease because we have faith that the airplane, even though it's 36,000 feet above the earth and flying at 500 miles an hour, will land at its destination and not kill us. So faith is not a difficult thing to have. The scientists and astronauts on the space shuttle have faith that in outer space where there is very little oxygen they're not quite in outer space they're in the upper atmosphere where there is very few molecules of of, of, of gas but they are they but but still they would uh it, it's essentially a vacuum uh, and they would die if the uh, space the station failed with its uh, oxygen and air supply. They have faith that it won't, and they don't have anxiety over that fact. And the people that landed on the moon, and this is not